All right, today, top 20 coral dipping mistakes. Yes. We've all made these mistakes, got all kinds of pests in our tanks, and or even maybe killed some corals, dipping them the wrong way. Today, you can learn from all of our mistakes so you don't have to, starting with number one. Number one, not dipping is the number one mistake. So, you know, just bringing your corals home from the LFS or, you know, online, should really get into dipping the corals regardless of where you get them from, just as that ounce of prevention. You know what? Uh, I saw a video by these guys actually, or uh, the Coral Rx, where all the little corals are chatting with each other about oh, yeah. the dip, uh, and they're <laughs> trying to encourage each other to bring the flatworms into the tank. You know? <laughs> no, it's it's true. Like if you don't do it, and it's just like one in, all of a sudden that organism, yeah. that bristle worm, that fire worm, that aptasia, and some of the stuff the dip doesn't necessarily work on, but a lot of them it does. Yes. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can increase the ability of the dip to uh, make it perform. But you, this is the step. The one that you don't want to miss, the mistake here, again, not dipping, you should, and today you will find out why. All right, number two, I fail at this all the time. Yep. I failed probably yesterday, I'll fail again <laughs> in the future, I don't listen to my own advice here, but you should. Uh, mistake is not using gloves. This, uh, you know, these are chemicals, these are, there's a, so some iodine based dips, some, you know, tea tree oil based dips, some more, you know, corrosive potentially uh, dips, stuff you buy off of the shelves type dips that people use. Just wear gloves so that way you just know that none of this stuff is in contact with your skin. In fact, there was one, uh, we were used to use that insecticide. Bear. Bear uh, coral dip for SPS, people used to use it. Use it's, gloves. It's not coral dip, it's like an insecticide. <laughs> I had my hands like all the way submerged in it and, and another fellow employee came here and he's like, what are you doing, right? Oh, that's like, I don't know, I'm just not considering this, I guess. <laughs> uh, I really, you should use gloves, but not just for the chemicals because yeah. you now have a bowl full of bristle worms and Anything. stuff yeah. uh, and you're gonna swirl it around in there with your hand, they're gonna get stuck in your hand, it's gonna irritate your hand. Just like wear some gloves, it's really, really easy. You can avoid all the chemicals and you can also avoid actually some of the pests from stinging you or harming your hands as well. Number three, probably the most common mistake because there wasn't any research up front. Yeah, the mistake is not knowing what you're dipping for. So, you know, like I said, there's uh, iodine based, tea tree oil based, you know, other types of uh, dips out there, hydrogen peroxide for algaes and things like that. So knowing what you're dipping for, maybe even what to look for, or knowing what is more prone to be on the types of corals you're gonna put in your tank will help you dip better. You know, a lot of the dips will actually see, achieve like a similar result in that the primary goal here isn't actually to kill anything. Yeah. It's just to like piss Irritate them off. Them, yeah. get them to, yeah, they, jump off. They fall off the coral, you swish them and they fall off more readily because they're all pissed off, right? <laughs> uh, and so the big thing is actually then, you know, to look inside that solution yeah. and see what you got. Like, so if I was dipping zoanthids, uh, I would look for the little nudibranchs. Yeah, there. the and spiders I, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and then if I saw them, that coral would definitely not go in there because it's now infected. It's probably got eggs on it if you look really close, almost certainly if you find the adults. Mm. So yeah, you know, knowing the difference here of like what you're trying to look for. So in each coral that you're bringing in, like it's euphilia, maybe I want to use a dip that's designed around brown, brown jelly or a, like an antiseptic. Worms. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there is like the coral Rx's of the world, that tea tree oil that really covers a lot of things and gets a lot of things irritated and falls off. But there's also things that are very specific to the type of coral as well as you sh what you should look for when you're doing it. All right, number four, this is uh, actually a big one. Yeah. So assuming that this one and this one and that one and that one and that one all do the same thing because they absolutely don't. That leads directly, why well, I said a big one, into a list of what they do do. Yes. Uh, and number five, and that's missing the freshwater dip. Yeah, freshwater dip. Uh, these are saltwater based critters and they do, some of them just don't like freshwater. They get irritated. And just like we were talking about getting them irritated enough so that they like, readily fall off or they're maybe so, to some degree might even uh, eliminate some of them. But Missing a freshwater dip, uh, don't overlook that. Have a bowl in your in your lineup of freshwater, RODI water, give them a little swish, see what falls off. And you know, it's uh, not a bad idea also just to have salt water around to swish some of the dips yeah. off afterwards. Yeah, that's true. But uh, freshwater related, uh, I will say that you, sh you should always do your research on each specific coral. There's mm. too many to list here today, but like, 
in my experience, zoanthids was one that I actually used fresh water and iodine to get off all the uh, nudie, uh, mm. uh, nudie bronchs that were eating my zoanthids. And so the fresh water combination wasn't really harming the mm. zoanthids. Uh, they would close up, but yeah. uh, they'd open back up an hour later. And it really pissed off all of the nudies <laughs> and they just fall off. So, you know, don't miss like some of the cheapest and easiest dips out there. One of them is fresh water. It won't work on every coral, but some of them really awesome. Number six, you can actually dip for algae as well. And so the mistake here is missing hydrogen peroxide as a dip. Just your standard hydrogen peroxide, it will do wonders on a lot of algaes. We've seen it firsthand, like in the clownfish harem tank, but even for dipping, when you get that frag plug that's got some uh, algae on it, or you get that LPS you know, wall hammer that part of the skeletons died off and now it's got turf algae or something on there, you know, try dipping those spots or treating those spots with hydrogen peroxide, watch the algae turn white and fall away. Yeah, so like we saw in that clown harem tank, bryopsis like plague. Ooh, yeah, bad, so uh, it was really, really bad. And what we would do is just drain the tank down, take that hydrogen peroxide, it actually comes in a spray bottle yep. from like CVS or Walgreens, mm -hmm. and just spray it right on the rocks. It's not gonna be bad for the water. And uh, you just spray it right on the rocks and let it sit for a minute and then boom, all of it will disappear by tomorrow. Like turns uh, white and falls away. Yeah, it's yeah. really fast. Uh, tomorrow might be a little quick, but it will go, it will die off right really really fast. That also works on coral uh, dipping as well. Now there's a lot of corals out there that won't tolerate full strength hydrogen peroxide. And to be honest, mm. man, one of the things that investigates could do here is uh, Test we could the start stuff testing out. different yeah. corals in this, and some I'd love to do. But I can tell you things uh, like zoanthids and stuff do really, really well. You can actually Google uh, on, or YouTube search uh, for corals and hydro, uh, hydro peroxide dips. You can watch some of them that work really well. Mm. Not only does the uh, coral do well in it, but the frag plug and everything else in there is just super, super clean. Especially like those zoanthids, you get them on rocks and they don't necessarily cover every surface of the rock. So there's algae in between some of the polyps Hydrogen peroxide. Boom. All kinds of funky, for especially all those wild colonies, it's where the coral is kind of mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, it's kind of grown around the algae like zoanthids yeah. do. Uh, uh, there's always funky algae in there. <laughs> and this is a really great way. Even if you have like a coral that may not tolerate peroxide really well, something as like a, like a toothpick, you know, Dropper, applied right yeah. on it, you mm. know, like use a paintbrush or, or something to get it on to where you want it and not where you want, and you'll kill the algae and not introduce it to the tank. Number seven, thank you, Philia. Yes, and missing antiseptic or iodine-based dips uh, is a big, big mistake because uh, the iodine-based dips like Lugol's can actually help those bacterial infections and you know, also using a turkey baster, Jen uh, actually has a good video out there about the Lugol solution itself. And her, her trick is to, you know, dip in Lugol's and then take like a turkey baster or some light pump and blow away that wispy, jelly, you know, kind of mucusy stuff around the LPS to get it off of the coral and then go let the coral recover. Works really well. Yeah, so like this is a really big one for a lot of euphilia. You'll get that brown jelly mm -hmm. disease or really though there's a lot of different things where there's like active like effect infection of yep. the uh, tissue and something like the Lugol's will actually stop that, eliminate it or actually slow down the process. But like, you know, sometimes you can actually even just break off some of it, use the Lugol's then and make sure that it doesn't yeah. affect the new tissue. That's a tip that Ed Jen has also is, you know, you have a big colony and you're losing pieces of it rather than, you know, dipping the whole thing, cut off what's bad save the good stuff and dip the one that's having a hard time. If it makes it, it's great. If it doesn't make it, you didn't lose the whole colony. I learned that with actually hammer, wall hammer yeah. a lot. Yeah. Is, uh, they'd get these weird infections and if you tried to solve it, a lot of the time you just, it would just like, if you waited out, the whole thing will die. Yeah. But if I took it to the bandsaw and just chopped off the part uh, that was <laughs> diseased, uh, the next part would make it just fine. So a lot of times it is about just cutting it off, but also you know making sure that the new part doesn't get infected with the old disease. 
All right, number eight. I think a lot of us have actually been guilty of this one. Yeah, so not reading the instructions for your dip is the mistake here. Read the instructions. There's, you know, some of them say don't add to tank at all. Some say, you know, you probably could or other people's have, but uh, the biggest part is the concentration, the dosage, the how long to keep the corals in, um, you know, some other procedures that can help with it. Follow those instructions, you more you might be killing your coral. Mm. Is this a gallon or is it a half a gallon? Actually, it says three quarts. Yeah. Uh, so it's three quarters of a gallon. So like find out, you right. know, exactly, you know, how much solution you're going to use, you know, actually use the right concentration. But when I say instruction, I'm going to take this one step farther. Yeah. Go watch YouTube. That's right? true. Go find out what others have said about how to use Coral or X or any one of these to the best of their benefit. Because the reality is I have not found the manufacturers to give the best information on what corals uh, this yeah. works with the best yep. and other options out there. Really, it comes from the community who is constantly using, using it, it yeah. and uh, evolving their methods. So, you just give a quick search for whatever coral you're trying to dip in, Coral RX or any of these out here, and you'll probably find some information that you didn't know before, and you'll have better results because of it. Number nine, there's always the opposite end of the spectrum, which is making the mistake of overdoing it, and that it could be a combination of like the overdoing the concentration or you know, you have this whole array of uh, frag dips and I think I'm just going to set up a station where I dip a coral in every single one of them just to be sure you might have put stress on the coral that didn't need to go in some of those dips. Yeah, we actually did that on the Beerus 160 we did. Uh, yep. early on and you know, the teams over at Worldwide and everywhere actually is like cringing when you're like, <laughs> uh, yeah, man, like I get what you're doing it, but also, you're gonna lose coloration on the coral. It's gonna take a year for it to turn around. You know, we're gonna take this beautiful blue coral yeah. and turn it down to dirty brown again. Cause you stretched it out by soaking it in that bear and then in the mm -hmm. uh, tea tree oil. And they're like, uh, yeah, so you can overdo it both in the amount of different dips that you do, but also strength more isn't necessarily better. Sure. I'd actually follow the directions uh, and then time too. So there's mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. I've been guilty of this one actually, even recently in my own tank is it says dip it for 10 minutes. I am about to put 20 corals in this tank, so I just kind of unpack them and put them in there and it kind of feels like it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> could be 20, could uh, be 30. You know, better would be to get prepared and put mm. five of them in there, you know, hey Siri, five minutes, yeah, 10 timer. minutes. Use an actual timer because, you know, or at least put them in, a, in in the order that you put them in and pull them out in that order because some of them could have been five, some of them could have been 10. And, you know, I'm gonna get, you know, various results because of that. All right, number 10, all of them will say, don't put it in the tank, but maybe you miss a step. Yeah, so the mistake is not rinsing them before you put them in the tank or before you put them in your uh, QT watch tank. So now after dipping, have some fresh salt water around and swirl them in some fresh salt water. Get that dip off of them, get those chemicals off of them, and then put it in your tank. You know, most of them are not acutely toxic right. in a manner that if a little bit got into the tank, I can tell you I have skipped this step in the past, mm -hmm. uh, but it, you're not asking for like with a minimum effort from us. You're asking <laughs> for the right path and the right path is definitely after you're done dipping them, swish them in a little bit mm -hmm. of uh, fresh salt water. They give it another chance for some things to fall off and then you're not adding any of the dip to the tank. Number 11, this applies specifically if you're gonna do a lot of them at once. Yeah, so the mistake is not heating the water or bringing up the temperature of the water. Whether it's the dip water or the rinse water, you know, what we're trying to avoid is unnecessary stress to the corals. We just told you that dipping them in everything is probably stressful, but wouldn't even be stressful if you just put them in cold water versus the 78 degree water they just came out of, probably. Mm. Yeah, so if you're going to just scoop out some water out of the tank, uh, put it in here and put some drops in it and start dipping, probably not a problem. Yeah, for a couple corals. But if I'm gonna use like a 20 long and I'm gonna dip like this big batch of 30 corals I got in, <laughs> uh, it's probably gonna be like 70 degrees by the time that you actually got through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, think about it. If you're gonna do a lot at one time, you know, it probably makes sense to heat the water, maybe even add a little bit of flow to it, uh, just to make sure that, you know, you're not stressing the corals out too much. Number 12, 
There's a lot of reasons to do this. Yes, and the mistake is not removing the plug or the plug that came on your coral. I mean, specifically Acros, an Acro type or a SPS branching type corals. If you want to ensure that nothing on that frag plug, whether it be acroiding flatworms, red bugs, or something like that, take one for the team, trim some of that, uh, you know, trim some of that coral and throw the plug away. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of different reasons for, uh, you know, getting rid of the plug, but the plug is where a lot of LGs will be. It'll be a lot where yeah. a lot of the pests are. So obviously with the SPS coral, like we really like to get rid of that base because that's mm -hmm. where all the eggs are. Adults will usually fall off in the dip. So one is you can trim it. Another one is, you know, you're probably going to take that little chip it off, it's gonna have a little glue or epoxy on it. You can add, actually add just a little bit more glue or epoxy around over the top of that and you'll probably encapsulate if there was anything in oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also this applies to LPS tanks, even maybe more so yeah. because, you know, if I got that little frag and you like, you know, glued this rock or skeleton to the plug, that is where a lot of the nasties yeah. hide, yeah. you know? And so, and they don't really come out. They'll get pissed off, but they're pinned in between that plug and uh, mm -hmm. the skeletal structure of the LPS coral. So if you pop that thing off and then dip it, mm -hmm. way more likely you're not gonna add those like fireworms or anything to your tank and <laughs> you won't have the same problem. So, you know, pop that plug off. Not only we get rid of more of the pests, but it won't look as ugly in the tank as well. All right, number 13. There's something you do before you dip as well. And then the mistake here is not inspecting your corals before you even begin the dipping process. And that's just kind of identify if there's bugs or if there's eggs or you know what is on there. Give you an idea of uh, one, what you should be treating for if you visibly identify it before you even start dipping. And uh, just kind of give you this all around, hey, should I be attacking algae? Is there algae on there? Should I be attacking flatworms? Is there flatworms on there? just inspect the coral beforehand. Mm. Yeah, because when I look at it and I say, oh, there's some funky algae on there. Now, think about what that looks like if it covers your whole tank, right? Because <laughs> yeah. uh, it could. Uh, some of these things are really invasive and hard to deal with. Uh, also, like visually, I can often just see the egg sacs or uh, uh, nudibranchs yeah. on my zoanthids. Like, just get a little magnifying glass and you can often just, I mean, you can see them with the naked eye, but yeah. with that odd magnifying glass, almost anybody can see it. The little spiral egg sacs mm -hmm. that are on there. Yeah. Uh, so inspection of the core before you dip it may be equally as important as the dip itself. All right, number 14. This is actually my favorite part. Reviewing what's in the bowl and not doing that is the mistake. So you just dipped all these corals it's really fun actually to go find out what fell off of them. Ah oh, man, look at that ugly bug or look at that thing. Uh, but definitely don't skip the step of reviewing the bottom of your bowl. Yeah, it, it, and like knowing what to do with it too. Right? <laughs> yeah, so if you true. see a nudibranch in there, don't think, oh, I got them all, that's sweet. No, nope, yeah. there's eggs. You're gonna you probably are... want to take that yep. uh, zoanthid and put it somewhere else and not in your display, especially if you got a lot of other zoanthids in there. True. Uh, in fact, I hate to say it, but even if you don't have anywhere to put it, maybe letting the coral die, man, is better than killing all the other ones in your tank. Mm. You know, bring it back to the store. I, I don't know, you know, set up a little new uh, uh, tank. But like thinking that, oh, I got to care for this coral, put it in your tank when it's going to kill all the other ones <laughs> is probably not the right move. So, you know, pay attention there. There'll be bristle worms. There'll mm -hmm. be, you know, sometimes spiders or any all kinds of different things in there. And then you'll know. But this is actually one of my favorite parts. Uh, not only is it fun to see all those things yeah, in there, yeah. But I can earn trust with the place that I'm buying stuff from too. Oh, yeah. So there are absolutely places that I buy from that are filled. Like the bowl is done and like, oh my God, look at all this stuff. <laughs> and then there are places where I buy it all from and like there's nothing in yeah. there, you know? Yeah. And so recently I got some uh, corals from Cherry Corals. I also got some corals uh, uh, from Route 66. And I get really impressed after dumping, you know, big LPS corals and dipping them yeah. for, you know, the 10 minutes inside of, uh, I think I'm actually using Coral Revive uh -huh. from Two Little Fishes. Uh, dipping them in there for the 10 minutes, there's nothing in a five gallon bucket with 20 colonies. Like, ah, they must be doing something right at the facility. So yeah, uh, that's one of my favorite parts to find out what's in it and also earning trust with the vendors who send me the least pests. Number 15, that's related just to what I talked about. <laughs> yeah, so the mistake is, the dip, see, toss, pray method. And that is, just like we said, you dipped it, you saw some stuff in there, you tossed it in anyway, and you just 
hope that it doesn't affect the rest of your corals. You know, really in reefing, the hope and pray method just stinks. It has really, really <laughs> low uh, fish, trajectory yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. expectations. So yeah, I, I would tell you, I don't, I mean, I hate to tell anybody that uh, you should let a coral die to save all the other corals, but the inverse is absolutely the wrong answer oh, yeah. as it's well. terrible. So like, it isn't like, oh, you know, most fish stores already have a lot of these pests. So if you really want to save the animal, go give the animal back to a fish store, try to sell it to them, I yeah. don't know, or, you know, ideally, you know, get a quarantine tank set up in your house so you can treat for these pests. Uh, but like the really, really important thing is don't go kill all of your other pets and animals that you care <laughs> for with this other one that's got parasites on it. So if you see it, don't just shrug your shoulders and throw in the tank. You now know and do something about it. All right, number 16, the real solution to that. Yes, is not making the mistake of overlooking a frag system separate, independent from your display to monitor after the dip. So maybe you found some stuff in the bottom of your bucket and you don't know if you got it all. Probably the best practice, make a frag system that's independent, put those corals in there and then just monitor well before you put them into your display tank. So it's actually really easy to beat a lot of these things. It's hard when it's in the tank, yeah. you know, and this, all the stuff is growing on the rock surface. Mm -hmm. But if I had a, uh, you know, a frag of, or even a colony of zoanthids, the only thing I need to do to get rid of those eggs is actually just dip it like every few days in the Lugals and freshwater, and then the adults just fall off, the little babies hatch, I do it again. Break and the cycle. I, th I think the cycle on those things is like, every three or four days mm -hmm. and after a few weeks, you're done. And I can just go ahead and put it back in the tank. No problem, I just put it in the system. And I don't have to worry about like infecting, you know, acros or euphilia with those things because they're not actively feeding on those things either. So yeah. just dipping on it is really easy. And the same thing with your acros. Uh, I can take my acros and treat for flatworms or, uh, you know, bugs or whatever, just by taking them out of a frag tank really easy, dipping them and then putting them back in. Yep. You'll get all the adults really, really easy. So set up that uh, quarantine tank for your corals because it's the easiest way to treat them. You know, protect both the corals you got new ones as well as the ones in the tank you already have. Number 17, I almost made this mistake the other day. <laughs> mistake is not having some of these coral dips or a lot of these coral dips on hand because, you know, especially like LPS, you get those random infections and maybe some of your hammers or your trachees or your wellzos or whatever, uh, maybe they get a little infection. Well, if I don't have coral dip on hand uh, because I dipped them long time ago when I first got them, uh, then I'm waiting for a coral dip to arrive while my coral is having an issue. Pull them out of the tank, I can dip them as long as I have the stuff on hand. I'll give you actually an example that happened the other day to me again. Okay. Uh, so I got a bunch of corals delivered here. Mm. I'm carrying them out to my car and Josh comes chasing me down. He's like, dude, you forgot the dip. And I'm like, <laughs> oh man, if I had brought all those corals home and I'm ready to put them in the tank and I realized I got no dip. Your decision would have been dump, toss, spray. I don't know, 50-50 whether, <laughs> I, like it's time, right? Like what is my family's reliance on me yeah. or whatever. 50-50 whether or not I go break back in here and uh, steal one <laughs> off the shelf. You know, so like it, it really is about making sure that you actually, like if you don't have any dip, it doesn't even matter if you're gonna order any coral. Sometime you're going to yeah. get some dip now because you will need it in the future. And if you don't have it, you're just gonna throw the pest in the tank. All right, number 18, don't miss this value. And uh, that is missing the value of a power head in your dipping station. So when we had like 30, 40 corals to add to the, uh, to the 160, we set up a 20 long with a frag rack, with a heater. We added a power head, which served two purposes for us. One, kept that, you know, medication churning, medication uh, in contact with the, the coral. But two, uh, all of those irritated adults and irritated, you know, pests helped blow off the coral because the power head was kicking them off. You know, with some types of corals too, I mean, I like to take the coral and give it a really Shake, vigorous yep. wish. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, I like to really think about the corals in the tank that I'm protecting more than the one that's in my hand. Uh, and so I'll give it a bigger swish. I really want to get all the pests and parasites mm. out of it. But, you know, you can do a little more refined thing with like something like a PMUP or even a MaxiJet oh, yeah. uh, and just kind of blow it off because it will often provide more pressure uh, blowing things off than even swishing. Twist, yeah. 
So yeah, use it a little bit more refined approach to blow off some of the pests, especially like you can really get underneath, you know, yeah. uh, if you didn't listen to a previous tip of, you know, blowing <laughs> in that crack that's in between the frag plug or mount and the coral itself to flush everything out of there. So consider using a power head both in the system, but also to flush them off. Number 19, we touched on this a little bit, but it's not just a preventative. Yeah, it's a treatment. So don't overlook using dips as a treatment. Uh, I kind of hit on this one with you have your LPS. Sometimes they get bacterial infections or you see them get like the brown jelly out of nowhere and you dipped them beforehand. Well, actually pulling them out and having those, uh, you know, antiseptic iodine type dips to dip as a treatment might actually save them and some of the corals already in your tank. I'll like actually go beyond that. Like even the hydroperoxide, like ah, just true. because yeah. that algae is now grown up and uh, something mm -hmm. you don't want, doesn't mean it's spread yet. Yep. And if I go scrub it off with a toothbrush, spread uh, palooza. <laughs> you know, it, it is definitely gonna spread out throughout the whole tank. But if I take the thing out and I just paint it with some mm -hmm. uh, hydrogen peroxide or even dip it if the coral allows it, I can actually eliminate that uh, whole algae from the tank. So treatment for parasites, treatment for algae, but a lot of these dips, are actually not just a preventative, but the cure as well. All right, number 20, quickly becoming one of my favorites, which is the mistake of paying full price. <laughs> if you're watching this in the next seven days, you can actually get 10% off all of the tools and uh, frag dips. Just hit out the community tab on the Beers TV channel page on YouTube and uh, the discount will be there. If you've already subscribed to BRS, you've probably seen it pop up in the mobile app already. So subscribe and you can get it by default. Yep. But if you wanna see anything else about all of these dips, you can actually check them out on the BRS site right here.